you got a light of flurf. Let me give you an example. Flat earther Austin Witsit makes this very specific claim about how NASA predicts where and when eclipses will be seen. The model, for sure. I mean, even though they literally can't, and admit on NASA's website, they have to use a stereo cycle. But they use something called the stereo cycle from the Chaldeans from 2500 BC to this day at NASA to be able to predict the eclipses. They cannot use the heliocentric model to predict eclipses at all. We still use ancient civilization stereo cycle to know when the eclipses are on NASA's own website. They literally use stereo cycle data to know the eclipses. Dude, you can't even explain eclipses. No, no, no. Your model can't explain eclipses. And in fact, NASA admits they can't predict eclipses with the heliocentric model yet. In 2021, they still use what's called the Sarah cycle, which is from the Chaldeans from 2500 BC, which is a flat Earth civilization, because it's called the Sarah cycle. The eclipses happen in a reoccurring cycle. But they can't use the heliocentric model to predict eclipses. They have to use the flat earthers math and model to predict eclipses. Well, is that true? Does NASA actually admit that they can't use the heliocentric model to predict when eclipses are? Well, no, of course, that's a lie because it came from a flat earther and they lie. NASA uses the ELP 2000 model to predict when and where eclipses will be seen, accurate to the location and better than minute. The variables that are input to the prediction model includes, you see, E prime, which is the solar eccentricity, that is the eccentricity of Earth's orbit around the sun. You've got uh, sigma 1, which is a relationship between the mass of the moon and the mass of Earth. And sigma 2, which is the relationship between the mass of the Earth, the mass of the moon, and the mass of the sun. And finally, you've got g prime there. Well, g prime is the gravitational constant times the mass of the Earth, which is certainly not from the flat Earth model. So, how is it that he thinks that NASA would admit or somehow claim or somehow use a flat Earth model to predict when and where eclipses would be seen? Of course, he doesn't have anything to support that at all because you got a lie to flurf. That's convenient. NASA still has to use the Sarah cycle from 2500 BC from the Chaldeans of flat Earth civilization to even predict eclipses. They admit they can't predict it using the heliocentric model. Oh, there's that lie again, Austin. Yeah, they actually talk about how they uh, gather the data to predict accurately the time and location of the eclipses, which includes the lunar laser ranging experiment or measurement that they did when they left that retro reflector on the moon. That's right, they used the Apollo missions to get the distance to the moon so that they can accurately uh, predict when the next eclipse will be. And it's not just kind of accurate. It's not just to the day. It's, it's, to, it's less than a half of an arc second is their accuracy. Um, <clears throat> none of it based on any flat Earth data at all. Now, there is some talk of Soros cycles, but it's just a bookkeeping Thing. They use the cycles to number the different times when when it will happen. And you, you can see right on their website all the different talk of it. But of course, they do include a huge amount of information about the distance to the moon, the gravity between the Earth and the moon, the variation of the distance to the moon, um, the eccentricity and perturbations added to the moon's orbit based on gravity from the sun and all sorts of other things. So that's a little strange there, Austin. Why do you have to lie so much? But now here's, here's a chance. Austin, somebody asked you in a recent debate for you to provide an opportunity, a, a chance. How does the Flat Earth make predictions like this? Let's see what he says. Witsit, can you direct us to a model of a flat version of Earth that can simultaneously explain day or night cycles, seasons, and what we see in the night sky better than the heliocentric model. 
Yeah, of course. In fact, these things can only be adequately explained on a geocentric stationary plane Earth model, including the eclipses themselves. They still utilize the Cero cycle from 2500 BC. The Chaldeans, NASA's website admits they still use that just to cycle the eclipses keep happening. But if we've been to space and the heliocentric model is so accurate, why can't they predict eclipses better than they could, you know, 2500 BC? And of course, they can predict eclipses much better than 2500 BC. 2500 BC, they could only predict the day, and even that wasn't very good. Now they predict the day, the time, and the location that it will be seen. That's how people can go to different states and set up so that they can see when the eclipse is going to happen. None of that uses any flat earth information at all. Austin, you didn't even do your own research like all the flat earthers say. Silly kid. Anyway, um, the bigger problem, of course, there's so many problems. Austin, let me just ask you this. I know you won't answer anything about eclipses because you thought that NASA uses a flat Earth model. You didn't even bother to check. But here's the deal, Austin. If the Earth is flat and the moon is local, wouldn't every location see a different view of the moon based on where they're at? Because if it's kind of close, somebody from the opposite side of the moon should see the opposite side of the moon, or at least a different percentage of it. But no! We don't see that. Everybody everywhere sees the same part of the moon all night long. Weird. Anyway, thanks for watching, and remember, you gotta light a flurf.